Today I'm going to show you how to make two ingredient biscuits. I've done lots of biscuit recipes and this is by far the easiest and simplest and best tasting biscuits that I've made. First thing we're going to need is two cups of self-rising flour and I don't buy self-rising flour. I just make it because all it is is all-purpose flour with some salt and baking powder. So I'll show you how to make the two cups that we need for this recipe. get a level cup of flour and I always keep a knife or a chopstick something to get a nice level top on my flour. Dump it in. There's one cup. We need two. Okay, since we're going to be adding some things in here, we need to take some of the flour out. So we're going to be adding two teaspoons of items per cup. So I'm going to take four teaspoons of flour out. Now we're going to add a half a teaspoon per cup of salt, two cups, one full teaspoon. So that replaces one of the teaspoons we pulled out. And then we need a teaspoon and a half of baking powder per cup. So since we need two cups, it'll be three teaspoons. just stir that around real good in your bowl just to get it nice and mixed up so there's our two cups of self-rising flour I'm gonna leave the top off of my flour because we'll need some more to put on our hands and on the dough and on our surface that we prepare it with as we go along so that we used a solid food measuring cup, which is the flat bottomed ones. Now we need a liquid measuring cup for the second ingredient, which is heavy cream. Nice and cold, which it would be anyway because you keep it in the fridge. By the way, I find this much cheaper to get the 32 ounces at Sam's than it is to get the smaller one at any regular store. All right, so we need two cups of heavy cream. There's one. And two. All right, so here's what it looks like. And the first thing I'm going to do is just get some kind of a utensil. So I'm going to use my spurtle. I love my spurtles. And you're just going to mix it around just until it all gets incorporated. Make sure you go around the sides and get everything that's on the side. You want all that flour to get in there, scrape along the bottom. This is going to be a really wet dough, but as we're preparing it, we're going to be adding more flour. Now, you could not pour in the entire two cups of cream and go from there, but I just use it and add what extra flour that I need. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's very, very wet dough. And I've scraped along the bottom, got all that flour incorporated in there. 
So the next thing I'm going to use is Clean Hands, Cook's Best Utensil. I'm going to sprinkle some flour over top of this because I know it's going to need it. And then I'm using a cutting board to prepare mine on, but you can use just a clean countertop. If you do use a cutting board for anything, if you take a wet paper towel, just a damp, like just sprinkle on some water on that paper towel and then put your board over it, it will not slide around on you. But I'm also going to sprinkle some of that on my board. Another thing I suggest you have is a food scraper for some wet dough like this. It comes in really handy. But again, not completely necessary at all. And I'm going to generously flour my hands, which I'll probably do several times. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take some flour out and just put it on my board so I'll have it. So then I'm just going to dump this out onto the board. And it's going to be messy. Get as much of that out as you can. We don't want to waste any that we don't have to. And like I said, it's going to be very messy. But it's okay. Okay, so since I did get my hands messy doing that, I'm going to rinse them off. Be right back. Okay, again, I'm going to sprinkle some more on top of the dough. Let me see if I can position this a little bit better so you can see what I'm doing here. sprinkle some flour on top of the dough, more in my hands. I'm just going to very gently, and you can start using your food scraper for this, and very gently just kind of fold over and pat, and fold over and pat, and we're just kind of kneading it. Fold over and pat. And we don't want to be real rough with this. And you want to make sure that it keeps moving. If it starts to get stuck on the bottom, just put some more flour on the board. You can even hold it in your hand. Just sprinkle some more flour. And if you just fold it over and turn it, just fold it over. Anytime it starts to still feel a little sticky, you can just put a little bit more flour on the top. And as we're folding over and gently pressing down, this is making layers for our biscuits. And it's still a wet dough. There's still places you can feel it's pretty wet. But it is coming together. We don't. The less we mess with the dough, the less we're rough with it, the more tender these biscuits are going to be. Just keep flouring my hands on the dough lightly as needed. Okay. I'm to the point where I'm happy with this dough. So you can either get a rolling pin out, or you can do like I do, and I just kind of push it out. Just carefully push it out. And then I have a biscuit cutter that I will dip in flour. But if you don't have a biscuit cutter, that's okay. You can use a glass, you can use a coffee mug. And the key to this, you see people push down and, and twist it. If you twist it, that's gonna keep your biscuits from rising as well. So just straight down and up and flour it and get as close as you can to the edge into the previous biscuit straight down and up. Flour it. And I should have mentioned that you need to have your oven preheated to 450 
If your oven runs hot, preheat your oven to 425. And mom, I believe that your oven runs about 25 degrees hot. And also you can prepare your pan. I have uh, a half a sheet that I have lined with parchment paper, but you can just use a regular pan and spread butter on it. We're gonna keep going around until we run out of space here. I think I can get one more out of here. Uh, I'm gonna wait. All right, so we're gonna take the carefully take the biscuits that we have and just very nicely place them on the pan. And you're gonna want them pretty close to each other. They don't have to be touching, but they should be pretty close. I should have made sure that the underside of this dough was really floured before I started this part because they're sticking on me now. But we'll take care of that for the rollout for the next few. I think I've got them spaced probably about a half an inch apart on here. Again, if you don't have self-rising flour, which most people don't, you really don't even really have to take off those two teaspoons of flour to add the other stuff, but baking is a little more precise and of a science, so I've always done it, and it's always worked, so I'm going to keep doing it that way. get a good amount of biscuits out of these. Alright, last one. Okay, I'm going to scrape the board a little bit here and I'm going to add flour. Flour to my hands again. I'm just kind of going to put some more layers on this and just kind of fold and press, turning. As you go, fold and press. All right, make sure that there's a little flower under here so it's not sticking this time. And just press it out. And I, it's about, I roll it out to almost a thumbnail high. And flour your, whatever you're using. Straight down, straight down. Straight down. All right, see these are not sticking, so they're much easier to pick up. And I think we can get a couple more out of here. So again, make sure that there's some flour. And there's one. And then I usually end up with just one ugly biscuit. I just kind of shape it in a circle because I certainly don't want to throw any of that goodness away. So there's my last little ugly biscuit. All right, so now they're on my prepared pan. Like I said, if you don't have parchment paper, um, just butter the pan that you're using well. And we're gonna pop them in the oven. I do them on the top rack so that the bottoms don't burn and we're going to time them for we're going to look at them at 10 minutes because this is going to be about 10 to 12 minutes depending so I'm going to set it for 10 minutes actually I'm going to set it for nine just because my oven is starting to be temperamental and not wanting to keep temperature but you don't want to keep opening and shutting, opening and shutting when you're baking, especially because you're letting all that heat out. And while 
last reading, I am just going to clean up. Be right back.